Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a titration. A titration is used to calculate the concentration of an unknown substance. Okay, okay, so we'll need the following apparatus for this experiment. So we'll need a pipette. We have a 25 milliliter pipette here. You'll need a beaker of your titrant, which is your known substance. So in, our, in this case, it's NaOH and you'll need a beaker of your titrand, which is your unknown substance, which in this case is HCl. You're also going to need a beaker for your waste, for when you finish your, tit your um, titration. You're also going to need a conical flask, which you're going to use with the barrette. Then you'll need a barrette, and the barrette we're going to use, we're going to fill with our, with our titrant. And then you're also going to need a white tile, because while we do our titration, we want to see the color of our result. Of okay, and then we're also going to need phenylphthalein, which is going to act as our indicator. And then finally, a conical flask, which is going to hold our unknown solution. And finally, you're going to need a retort stand to just hold your barrette. Okay, so before we start with anything, we need to first rinse all our apparatus. So let's go do that. Okay, so we're using deionized water because it obviously doesn't react. So we're just going to clean our apparatus, conical flask, make sure to clean inside and rinse, and also make sure to clean the neck. Don't clean your barrette because, yeah, just, we're just going to fill it up with our known so solution. Okay, so it's important to make sure your barrette is closed, otherwise your NaOH is just going to flow right through. So we're going to take our NaOH and we're just going to fill our barrette, making sure it's closed. And once again, it doesn't have to be at zero, it just has to be at a reading. Now we're going to take our pipette and we're going to take a bit of our unknown solution and place it in the pipette. So this is an automatic pipette. So I squeeze the bulb and then I put it in here into my HCL, I hold my one valve and it fills up, this might take a while and if you look closely you'll see that we must, we must line up our liquid with the line here and then we know we have 25 centimeters cubed or milliliters exactly there we go Okay, and now we can place this in our conical flask. Let's fill up our conical flask. This takes a while as well. And make sure you don't get that. There's going to be a drop of liquid left in the pipette. But don't try to get it out. The pipette's made. It takes that into account. Okay, now we're going to need some indicator. So let's go get that quickly. Okay, for our indicator we're using phenolphthalein. So we're just going to use we're going to use the dropper and we're going to put in three drops of our indicator into our HCL. And that's fine. Cool. Okay, so before we can start our titration we have to first get our initial reading from our our barrette. So if we put a white tile behind, we measure from the bottom of the concave and we measure to three decimal places. So this is about 33.40. Okay, so now we can actually start our titration. So a few things to remember is when you, to open, you must always place your hand around your barrette and then hold the tap. And then with your other hand, you, t you grab your conical flask on the neck and you spin. So we just keep spinning and we open and close the tap slowly and let a few drops go through. And we just carry on doing that. And I already know that there's at least nine in here, so I open them quite a bit, let it run. And you basically want to carry on until you get a rosy pink. So if we carry on... And you'll see that the pink stays longer the further we go. So you carry on. 
So you want the rising pink to stay. Okay, and there we go, we're done. And that's a titration. Okay, so once we've done our titration, now we need to get our final reading of the volume. So if we use the flat tile, you go eye level, remember, two decimal places. So that's 48.18. Okay, so after you've performed three titrations, and every titration has given you a change in volume, you can come up with an average change in volume, which you can then use to calculate the concentration of the unknown solution. Okay, so in our tests, we, after three titrations, we came up with an average volume of 13.665 centimeters cubed. So we'll be using this volume for our calculations. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a balanced equation for our experiment. Now there's a nice general equation that we can use where we can just substitute our own chemicals to do this. And that is A number of moles of acid plus B number of moles of base forms a salt plus H2O. And we can basically use this and substitute our own values in there. So we know that our acid was HCl and our base was NaOH. This means that it formed a salt NaCl. Now what we can go do is, now we can go and balance it. Well, H, there's two H's on the left, two H's on the right, that's balanced. One Cl left, one Cl right, one Na, one Na, one O, one O. Okay, so this is already balanced. So that means we have one mole of HCl reacting with one mole of NaOH to form NaCl and H2O. So now we can use this general formula to calculate the concentration of the acid. And here you can see it here. So now we can go and substitute our values in. So we're looking for the concentration of the acid, Ca. We know that the volume of our acid is 25 because we used a 25 milliliter pipette. This goes over the concentration of our base, which we were told is 0 0.1, times the volume of our base, which is this value over here. So that means it's 13.665, like so. And that is equal to the number of moles of our acid, which is A. So that's 1 of the number of moles of our base, which is 1. Now we can go and do some manipulation, and we can conclude that now we can say that CA, 25 CA, so 25 of CA, is equal to, and since this side simplifies to 1, we can just go 0 0.1 times 13.665, which will give you 1.3665. And I'm just going to carry on over here. So that means that we have the concentration of our acid. We're going to divide that by 25. And we know that the concentration of our acid is equal to 0 0.05 if we round off to two decimal places and that's moles per decimeter cubed and you'll notice I said decimeter cubed even though we measured in centimeters cubed but no you don't it doesn't matter because we used a ratio so the centimeters essentially fall away and that's how you do it